Welcome to the barrier panel, breaking barriers. And why do we do that? Because we want to release all judgments and look at each person as an individual. And we want everyone to know that they are respected and they are valuable. So today we are so excited because for the first time ever on the Women's Council stage, we have four different organizations within the real estate industry joining us. They are going to share their story. They're also going to give us some information and help us to find out how we can collaborate and partner together. Because the fact of the matter is, is that together we are all better. So I'm going to introduce each of them as well as myself. Just so you know, today is being recorded and will be used on all social media for all of our organizations as we continue to work together for the future of the real estate industry. I'm going to start in uh, alphabetical order, so that's how it's gonna work, with ARIA. You know, in real estate, we love our acronyms. However, in the Women's Council of Realtors, we started to get away from acronyms so we used to be WCR this, WCR that, and if you're talking to someone and they don't know WCR, they don't know ARIA, they don't know FIOPSI, they don't know LGBTQ, I've got it, I promise, NARAB and all that, they don't know who you're talking about. So let's begin with ARIA, Asian Real Estate Association of America. And joining us today is the 2021 National President, Amy Kong. Amy is an immigrant from Hong Kong. She has served the San Francisco and Mid-Peninsula real estate markets since 1988. For decades, Amy has been tireless in her community outreach efforts, promoting property ownership, enhancing the rights of property owners, and advocating policies which enhance the economic benefits of property ownership. Among her impressive designations, such as CRS, CRB, Certified Distressed Property Expert, Amy is co-founder of Trust Real Estate, a side network partner. Now, I'm not sure what that is, but you, I'm sure you'll get into some of that. Honesty and integrity are her core values in the business and also in her community outreach. Among her various local and national endeavors, Amy served as the 2011 Chinese Real Estate Association of America President, the 2017 through 2019 Asian Real Estate Association of America President, Ed Education Founder Chair, and is the 2021 Area National President. She's bilingual in e English and Cantonese. Please welcome Amy Kong. Next, we're going to go to FIOPSI. I remember when I brought this to the awareness of the national leadership team, they were like, what is that? Well, let me tell you what it is. FIOPSI is the International Real Estate Federation. And joining us today is the 2021 USA President, Eugenia Foxworthy. <laughs> Eugenia, has a long history. She's broker owner, Foxworthy Realty in New York City. It opened in 2008. It's a boutique brokerage. She's a member of many different associations, including the Women's Council of Realtors and the Asian Real Estate Association. She is a certified New York residential specialist. She has her CIPS, FIRAC. Like I said, I don't even know what FIRAC is, but we'll find out. And she is certified New York Minority Women Business Entrepreneur since 2008 to the present. She has affiliations with many boards and memberships. The Cathedral of St. John, The Divine, New York Women's Chamber of Commerce, Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, Greater New York Chamber of Commerce, Harlem's Arts Alliance, Uptown Dance Academy, Harlem Tourism Board, various art institutions, plus 
several acolytes. She's got citations, certifications, proclamations, and she is very proud to be a member of the New York Women's Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome Eugenia Foxworthy. Next, we have the LGBTQ plus Real Estate Alliance, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning. And joining us today is the CEO, 2021 CEO, Ryan Wyatt. Ryan is a veteran mortgage lender, officially became the CEO of the LGBTQ plus Real Estate Alliance on September 30th, 2020, on the eve of the organization's launch. Wyatt has spent the last 10 years in the mortgage industry, most recently as a senior mortgage loan officer at U.S. Bank, after serving six years at Wells Fargo. Prior to his lending career, he held a variety of senior roles with firms in operations and event management. He has served on the Minnesota Realtors Diversity and Inclusion Committee and previous led the NAGLREP Foundation, along with being a pres past president of the organizational, organization's Min Minneapolis chapter. He is a University of St. Thomas grad who completed his master's work in organizational leadership at St. Catherine University. Wyatt was named as a Riz Media real estate newsmaker in 2021. Please welcome Ryan Wyatt. Next, we have NARIB, National Association Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Joining us today is the 2021 Certified Trainer for Hispanic Wealth Project and Regional Director for National Advocacy Committee, Imelda Manso. Please welcome. Amel Manso is the broker owner of Premier One Realtors and has been an active and successful real estate professional since 2004. She is a very passionate member of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Imelda is a founding director of the Temecula Valley National Association of, of His of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals Chapter, where she had the honor to serve as president in 2019, and currently serves as the Emeritus Director. Imelda is a proud ambassador for NARAB's Hispanic Wealth Project and is a regional director, as mentioned before. Please welcome Imelda Manzo. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Pamela Banks your 2021 National President of the Women's Council of Realtors. I have been a member of this organization for 17 years. I am a realtor in Lake Worth, Florida, which is just north of Miami on the East Coast with Remax Direct. I'm very dedicated and passionate about the profession. I've served on national committees, local state, board of director, and one of my most important accomplishments was being part of the community outreach where we started to benefit 5K for children with, that are disabled and handicapped. So it's an honor to serve all of you and let's hear from these amazing people on the panel. So we're gonna get started. I've got some questions here. I think I'll start with you, Amy. Tell us your why and the story behind your organization. Well, um, you can hear, right? Yeah. All right. Is Aria in the house? <laughs> yeah. All right. See, collaboration already. Hey. Well, Aria actually is a much younger organization. It's founded back in 2003 by two great gentlemen from the San Francisco Bay Area, Mr. John Yan Wong and also Mr. Alan Ogomodo. So. The founding story is a little bit interesting when they share with us, it's like, you know, they were over dinner, a very cheap Chinese dinner, they said, in Houston, Texas. So they were having a conversation about what are the challenges for Asian American in their home buying process and home ownership. So ended up, it comes to a conclusion out from this conversation and they put things in action. That's when ARIO was born. 
So after this 19 years of development, based on the fact that we are passionate about our Asian American Pacific Islander community's homeownership gap, at that time, 2013, uh, 2003, homeownership rate for AAPI community was only 54%, while the white community homeownership rate is about 74%. Certainly, what's the problem with that? So with that kind of passion and the determination, we now, entering into the 19th year, we have 42 chapters across the US and Canada, and we are 17,000 members strong organization. <laughs> the good thing about ARIA, and the most important work within ARIA, is become the voice of the AAPI community on their housing need. So I'll just stop there. But on top of it, one thing I want to remind you, we have two entities. One is for profit, it's called ARIA Global. The other one is called ARIA Foundation, which is strictly nonprofit, reaching out to the community. Our ARIA Global is here in NAR convention. Go to the exhibition hall and visit them. Thank you. Well, am I next? Yeah, you <laughs> might as well. Okay. Buenos dias, familia. I don't know if we have any NARIT members in the house. Hopefully we do. Oh. Woohoo! I feel the love. <laughs> Well, NAREP was um, founded by, our two co-founders are Gary Acosta and late Ernie Reyes. Um, and this was back in 1999. And it was done with a simple premise to create a place for Hispanic real estate professionals to thrive and better serve Hispanic home buyers and sellers. Um, our organization currently has about 100 chapters and 40,000 members um, strong and, and growing, and we are considered one of the largest minority um, business trade associations. Um, currently, right now, we have about 60.2 million Hispanics in the U total U.S. population, which, you know, is about 19% of the total U.S. population. Um, just in California alone, we have about 44% of the population in California is currently Hispanics. Oh. So our mission at NAREP is to advance sustainable Hispanic homeownership. And we do that by three things. One is to empower and educate the real estate professionals that serve Hispanic home buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. And two is by advocating for public policy that supports our trade association's mission and by facilitating relationships with you know, anybody in the real estate industry. So we've been around for, you know, since 1999. We are continuing to grow, and I hope that if you're not a member that you'll consider joining our amazing organization. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan, we'll let you answer that as well. You're the new kid on the block. It's, it's true, we're, <laughs> we're definitely the freshmen in the room. Um, so as you said, we opened the doors actually on October 1st, 2020. And we started the organization about six months prior to that as a result of the former organization um, essentially imploding. And the members at that point in time identified a very serious need to continue the work that we were doing at that organization. So we have a unique story actually. I, I consider myself to be one of the co-founders of the organization. In reality, there was a steering committee of 50 people that got together over the course of uh, four or five months um, with counsel from Gary Acosta and from John Wong um, and, and the folks at NAR and it was, um, while well, trying to put together 50 very active, high-profile realtors on one Zoom call at one time uh, was a little like herding cats. But I have to tell you, it was the only way to ensure that we'd get everyone's buy-in on how to ethically and morally move forward with a new organization. So we opened the doors. Uh, I think our, our incorporation date was June 25th of 2020 and we opened the doors for membership on October 1st. Between October 1st, 2020 and October 1st, 21, we have put on 1,700 members. So we are in a hyper growth mode. We're very grateful. Obviously, we're probably the smallest entity at this point in time. Uh, we do have a network of 50 chapters throughout the country, um, which we're constantly evolving and, and growing. Uh, again, very grateful to uh, our, our peer organizations as they were very instrumental in helping us form uh, and come to fruition. 
fruition. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, Pamela. As you said, this is a unique opportunity. Uh, sharing the stage with these brilliant women uh, is, is a, a pleasure. And honestly, someone who's anywhere between 25 and 50 here, um, and a gay man being in a room predominantly of women is new for me. So I, I'm, I'm glad to be here as well. So. I'm glad you feel at home, Ryan. We're glad you're here. And you know what, there, what, what you said was very interesting is strategic. Each of you said there was a strategic move that started this or your organizations. And the same is true with the Women's Council of Realtors. So Eugenia, tell us a little bit about FIOPSI. Well, I feel like the grand dame in here. <laughs> uh, FIOPSI is the International Real Estate Federation. It was founded in 1951, and we are international. The three that countries that founded FIOPSI was Australia, Spain, and France. So we came out then. So uh, we are uh, very diversified. We are the only diversified real estate organization in the sense of specialties and activities. We encompass every aspect of real estate, attorneys, uh, construction workers, what more can I say, builders, investors, uh, sur purveyors, surveyors, everything involved in real estate. We are uh, the organization. Now, Theopsy is a business, networking, and professional organization, and we also are involved with the United Nations. Uh, we are in ECOSOC with the United Nations, and we are consultants. It means that we are consultants, and we're involved with affordable housing before it became a buzzword. We have been doing this for decades, and um, we have ambassadors who are members as well. We're in 60 countries. We have, well, our, one of our principal members is the Women's Council, who is new. They just recently joined. And NAR and is one of our principal members. And we have, I think, about I cannot remember. We have over 45 different organizations. So we're like the umbrella. I won't continue because I will be here all day saying who we are and what we do. Well, thank you. One of the things that I think is so important to all of us is to understand how you know, how much we are alike. We all have the same foundation, ethical, integrity, honesty. We all want to promote that. And so with these organizations and that we align, it's been kind of different over the last, say, two years. Having our first live meeting this year. So tell us how your organization have adapted, have pivoted to a not a face-to-face -face world. So who wants to start with that one? I, I guess I can kick it off. We, uh, we have a very unique position in this. We were born in a pandemic, and I don't think anyone would ask for that, but it turned out to be a very um, strong blessing in disguise as we were forced to come out very strong from our inception with, with virtual and digital programming. So realistically, all we've known up until this point is how to really hammer social media uh, and virtual programming. We try and do something once a month, and our chapters are on their own as far as the schedule that they want to program on with an expectation from national that they do something at least once a quarter. Uh, educationally, we have philanthropic standards for our chapter 
programs as far as events as well. But we have found that the reception, obviously, as all of you can attest to, was great at the beginning, and we're all getting a little weary of sitting behind a computer, no matter how nice those sweatpants and gym shorts are from the waist down, right? Um, it's good to be back in person, and, and we'll get a little bit further into it. Unfortunately, we were in a position where we had a live in-person conference scheduled uh, for the end of September in Las Vegas, and the Delta variant outbroke and, and really overtook Las Vegas. Um, our membership is unique in that we, we surveyed our members, and 42% of the folks that were registered to go to the convention had children under the age of 12. So the board of directors looked at things. We decided it wasn't worth taking the risk, um, even though we did have a vaccination mandate in place, to send folks in and potentially bring something back to their kids or their school district. So we did pull the plug on the event, unfortunately. Um, and uh, this, so to speak, is our, our in-person debut. So again, very grateful to be here. Yes, well, you know what I think is interesting is there are some of our members in this room who don't know anything different either. You know, they're new to the organization, they got in on a virtual world, and so it, it's very commonplace. We, as the Women's Council of Realtors, are a very much a relationship-based organization. And yes, you can build relationships over the airways, but there's nothing like face-to-face. And I think what we're noticing is we can take care of some business on the internet, and then we can take care of our networking, our learning in person. So how do you see your organization, Amy, on the other side of all of this? Well, um, yes, during the pandemic, I'm a lockdown president, okay? The minute I got installed, I got locked down. So, um, Zoom call, of course, you know, as uh, Ryan described. But I guess the most important thing is the content mm -hmm. on what's in your Zoom call and what kind of message are you delivering, right? During the uh, pandemic time, uh, the lockdown time, uh, of course, you know, everybody is like facing a lot of challenges and all kinds of stuff. So for us as an Asian American community, we face the Asian hate crimes. Mm. And uh, at the time, I guess it's all about taking action right there. So at the time, of course, we were confused. Are we Americans? Are we not belongs to this country? Why are we being hated? You know, why are people who have to live in fear? All kinds of either anger or questions that pop up on top of the lockdown on top of the isolations. So ended up ARIA put together a diversity and fair housing summit online. It was so successful. And I even got, got messages from some of the attendees that I don't even know them saying thank you because we opened up an opportunity and a platform for them to voice out, for them to share their feelings. So I think when we are facing challenges, there are a lot of opportunities. Most definitely. And so, Amelja, is there anything that you would like to add? I know the Women's Council, we did. When we got together last year, 2020, and we decided that um, in November of, uh, of last year, that it wasn't business as usual. Our members were hurting in different ways, you know, mentally, physically, financially. And we put together what's called a health, wealth, and self to embody the whole person. And so that's some of the things that we have been doing. So Imelda, is there anything different that your organization has done? Well, with us, it was, you know, especially with Latinos, who are very face-to-face, -face, very touchy. Um, our Hispanics um, need to feel that trust by seeing you in person when we handle transactions. So I know Zoom for us was very big. Um, you know, we had a lot of members that had clients that went into fear when this whole pandemic hit and we went on lockdown. As Latinos, I think that we were hit really, we were one of the demographics that got hit the hardest because we a lot of Latinos are in the front lines, you know, in the hospitals, you know, doing the jobs that 
couldn't be done from home. So we had a lot of clients, a lot of members that were um, freaking out because, you know, people were calling in, you know, I, I'm going to miss my house payment. What can we do? So we started putting a lot of Zoom educational events to give them assistance on how to apply for the different types of mortgage relief programs, you know, the PPP programs for the small businesses that got hit the hardest. Um, so we did um, educational seminars for rental assistance, but it was hard getting Latinos, especially the ones that are not very techy. We would tell them, I'd send them a Zoom link, and this is how you do it. We're literally on the phone giving them steps, step by step. How do I turn on the camera? How do I do that? But you know, I think we adjusted, and it's just a matter. You know, nobody was expecting this. It's something that I think everybody just needed to adjust. Um, a lot. Of, we did notice a change in people being more active on social media, like Randy mentioned, um, doing videos and just putting educational content out there for them to see it. You know, via Zoom or you know social media. So I think that, you know, as the Realtors Association is making a push for members to become more diverse, equity and inclusive and in doing those efforts, how can the global real estate um, be a part of that and help promote that understanding? Eugenia. I think that using FIOPSI as an example, we're in 70 countries but we are all different nationalities in the different countries. We, are, we have 12 chapters in the United States. We could have more if the members knew who we were. And um, I feel that um, in order to make us all relevant, it's what we're doing now, working together and uh, getting to know each other. The Zoom calls helped. But I had another little thing that came about when I was selected, uh, not selected, voted in as the president, which I had avoided for 15 years. And I decided I'm ready to go. I thought I would be, and I'm answering your question, that I would be out when I decided to run, I would be able to say, okay, I'm going to all these countries, I'm gonna get a lot of business because that's how I got my business. People in other countries coming here were recommending those people that they knew here, vice versa. But what happened, we got locked down. So I'm not gonna go through the Zoom calls, but when I became the president, I wanted to be visible. I said, let me utilize things, and this is what Biopsy started. In 70 years, I'm the first brown president in the history of the organization. The press did not know who Biopsy was. That was when I started. People were inviting me to speak real estate people. I spoke on some radio station in Texas, everywhere. And the one thing, two things they said, number one, who are you? No one knew who we were, they knew who a lot of other organizations were. That gave the opportunity to use the press in a positive sense. And uh, that's what uh, I, I think what Kim was saying is, although there were challenges, there were many opportunities, as Eugenia just said. And you know, you mentioned something which is all important. We belong to organizations ultimately to get business. So tell us, and I'm going to start with you, Ryan, how can belonging to these or your organization be a, a part of our business plan? business future? How can we do business together? Uh, sure, great question. So just kind of piggybacking off the tail end of that question, we, I mean, we have a unique responsibility to our, our community and our membership. We don't have a geographic home per se, right? The LGBTQ community is everywhere. It's everyone. We don't have a specific racial group or nationality that can pose our, our segment. So from a global perspective, um, we're proud to work with our, our friends at Korea up in Canada, just north of us here. Uh, the, the Latin American Chamber of Commerce has invited us into six countries. 
uh, south of the border, which we're going to be exploring in, in 22, and we've got some aggressive European uh, growth that we've been invited into in the European Union as well. But I think the important thing to realize is that right now, according to the U.S. Census, one in five Americans knows or loves someone that is part of our community. So whether you're aware of that or not, whether they're out or not, that's a real statistic that the Census Bureau just released. Um, Working with the LGBTQ community, regardless of your personal opinions or beliefs, is good business. And let me tell you why. The American LGBTQ community is the ninth largest economy in the world. Mm. It's larger than the combined economies of South Korea, Japan, and Canada. That's just in the United States alone. So the purchase potential in our economy is mammoth versus the 49% home ownership rate which is tragically low. And then when you get into uh, our BIPOC com community inside of, of our uh, LGBTQ community, our, our persons of color are, I think, plateauing at, at the low 30%. So we have work to do. Um, and really, the business case for working with our community, I think, is very clear cut. We offer some great education for anyone who's not comfortable and doesn't know how to approach taking those first steps. We have a great two-hour Alliance Certified Ally program that we've deployed now. Uh, I think 26 states, several hundred realtors have become certified. It's really LGBTQ 101, things to say, things to avoid saying, how to open up that door, how to treat a, a same-sex couple when they walk into an open house. Um, very basic stuff. But, you know, we're here and, and we've got great purchase potential. I think it's good business to, to work with us. I agree. I think we can all learn and grow and, and do business together. So that's one of the most important things is collaboration. And we talked about that and that's why we're all here because as, you know, since I don't speak the language, how do we, many of us who may be out here thinking, well, how do we get, why would we get involved? Or is there room for us that don't, don't relate and don't speak the language? So what would you say to that, Kim? Actually, I wanted to answer a portion of your question earlier, is that, you know, when you talk about business opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. I always say that when you do networking, it takes a longer time. Okay, you have to throw yourself out there to let people know who you are, what you do, and how you do it, right? If you don't go out and network, kind of like within the WCR or to other different organizations, there's no way you'll be able to develop your business. So networking is important. Okay, another portion is like, when you are doing business with some of the consumers that is not familiar to yourself, Right? For example, if there is a Chinese client comes to you, okay, you might be able to get by and close the transaction, but what, how, and what you can do to make that client to become your long-term client, meaning that you have to understand the culture. At closing, you don't want it to give them a clock as a closing gift, right? So by understanding different culture, would definitely increase the opportunity for you to do more business. So within ARIA, we create a lot of video. They are free, okay? Don't have to pay. Go on YouTube, look at the ARIA channel. We provided a series, it's called More Than One. We go around and interview some of our ARIA members that are from Vietnam or from uh, China or from Korea, from Philippines. That interview will tell you a lot about those people, how and where they come from, how they do business, how's their background look like, right? And then another series is called, we call it ACE, which is the Asian Culture Etiquette. We will tell you what's the difference of using a chopsticks? How will we handle business card? How will people negotiate? Those are very interesting short videos. Go ahead and learn, right? Learn how to interact with people. Learn how to negotiate. Why the Chinese always use, you know, one point two nine eight 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 million dollar? <laughs> <laughs> how you would be able to win that particular offer, right? I think those are very, very valuable, and it's fun, and you will understand your neighbor better, and our community will be more beautiful, people. So I would say. 
your job. It is your job to equip yourself with tools. Then, when the opportunity knocks, you're right there and you win it. That's great advice, and I love Ace. So we can go to YouTube. We can find those things. And and you know what? I think you said something very interesting. And I know we all feel the same way here. Is when you meet different people, you get a different perspective. You learn. And you open your mind to all the different possibilities that are out there. And so, even in this room, if we were to talk, none of us are alike. All of us bring something different to the table. So, attending something like Aria or Narab or the LGBTQ, uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> and, and, and you know, the Alliance is that is that what they're? They, that's yeah, we do go by the Alliance. The Alliance as a courtesy to everyone. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> so so I don't easier. feel so bad. So you know, um, Amelia, the same with you. You know, the, the Hispanic. Do you know the percentage of of realtors that are Hispanic? I mean, is you know what? That's a good question. I don't know what the actual percentage of Hispanic realtors is. Um, but I could tell you that I am going to make a recommendation to everyone that's in the room um, based on some stats that we have uh, as far as what we have coming in the next 20 years. Um, according to a predictions made by the Urban Institute, it is predicted that over the next 20 years, 70% 70, 70 of all new home ownership is going to be done by Latinos. So if you don't know Spanish, I highly recommend you get your Rosetta Stone courses ready because you will need it. Um, you know, so that's something that I'm just super excited about to see how even over the past six years, um, the Hispanic was the Hispanics were the only demographic that show that they, you know, they kept they keep increasing the home buying, um, you know, purchases for, for homes. So um, I, I don't know, now I'm going to be very curious to find out what the percentage is, but I know that we have a lot of Hispanics, and part of the reason for that is we are considered the youngest um, demographic. Our average age right now is 29.8, so that makes us um, nine, nine years younger than um, the rest of the population. So Hispanics are just entering their home buying years. I believe right now we have about 8.3 million Latinos that are ready and qualified to make a home purchase. That's amazing. So get that Rosetta Stone ready, or I heard Babel's a good one too. <laughs> I love it. So, and I, I also, go ahead, Kim. One more thing. If you're a business owner, make sure diversity is important in your office, right? If you don't speak the language, and for me, I don't have that kind of talent to learn, but hire someone that speaks the language in your office, then you will be able to capture that sector of the business, right? If you don't know how to speak Mandarin, it's totally fine, hire me, okay? So, <laughs> so diversity and inclusion in your office, it will definitely escalate your business and help you grow. You know, I also think that um, when we break barriers, we also get a better understanding of the world. We live in a global world, let's face it. And it, I think if the pandemic taught us anything, it taught us that we're all in this together. So why not work together to make it all better? And so when I think about how we can work together, um, Ryan, you know, you're the new kid on the block. You know, we've been talking about doing some things together. And the Women's Council of Realtors is actually 83 years old. So it, it started in 1924 when a seed was planted by just a couple of women. And then in 1938, the national president of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which is the predecessor to NAR, actually realized the benefit of having women and what they bring to the table. So we are an organization that has a huge infrastructure, 225 local networks, 25 state networks, a presence in 39 states. And we take that very serious as a way to get to know other cultures because even in our own country, if you're not traveling around to see things, you're learning something new when you travel around to different parts of the country. And so tell us how, and Eugenia, I know that we, we have become a principal member of FIOPSI this year, and we're, we're very honored to do that. And as a principal member, what does that do for us, and how does that work? 
As a principal member, it enables you to have your membership become more familiar. And we have a lot of things I did not mention, uh, a lot of educational programs. We have a new uh, international website. There are, here in the United States, we're predominantly brokers and agents. And I think that our working together, as with any organization, it's working in numbers and the strength. And I think that all the, you as a principal member will help us grow and we will help you grow because we, what we have to offer is different than a lot of others. And um, our platform, like I said, we've been doing it and we had, we started off international, but we're all global. I live in New York. We've been global since I've been in New York because people are coming, people are going. And that's what we do with our principal members. We work together and that strength, it's like an octopus. We all pull each other in and that is most important. You know, I, I think that as we wrap this up, I'd like to know how can our members get involved? Are you having any conferences coming up? What's next on the horizon for each of you? and how can our members, I know with Viopsy, there are different chapters around the country that you as a local network or a state can tap into and learn more about different countries and you can work together on some education and some training. But tell us if there's anything going on. So what's next for all of you and how can our members be part of that? Ryan? Sure. Well, I guess we've we, got the mic. We pro well, and we probably fall next in line. In fact, December 9th, we have our virtual conference. Um, it's going to be a, a low commitment, high intensity. We're, we're looking at it as a, a mastermind, and I hate using that word, but until someone figures out what to call it other than mastermind. Um, basically, it's a $60 price tag, folks. You have a 30 day window that you can access the content. We have everyone from Carson Cressley, Queer Eye from the Straight Guy, uh, joining us for, the, for that conference. Leslie Ruta Smith is going to be with us delivering a message. Um, we've got some powerhouse CEOs Tammy Bennell, Exit Realty, Anthony Hitt, um, Gino Belfari of, of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. It's going to be a phenomenal show. Um, like I said, it's, it's low commitment. If you have things to do during the day, you can do that and log on three days later and pick up the session that you missed. So we've got that coming up in April. Um, fingers crossed that nothing else happens. I'm getting sick of this pandemic. Uh, the last week of April, we have our policy summit in Washington, D.C. that NAR is actually hosting at their headquarters. Uh, we will be there. And then September 28th through the 30th, we will be at Resorts World in Las Vegas for our first <laughs> in-person live national convention. So we would invite you to join any of those. Obviously, we have uh, full information and discount tickets for registration, which is open now for several of those events on our website. I didn't mean to be rude, but I wanted to say that we're having our annual conference, fall conference here in New York as well. I mean, here in San Diego as well. Um, it's too late to join us for our cruise, which is the Prix de Excellence that we give. It's an award that's like the Academy Award that we give to um, different developments, They're whatever people do. And that is something that's a tool that the agents have taken advantage of. But we have a meeting tomorrow, which you, ca you cannot come to our meeting, but we have two dynamic speakers at the Grant Hotel. And you're all welcome. Hopefully, there'll be room for you to just come. It's free at 2 o'clock. So I wish that you would join us. That's what's happening here. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> I apologize, but I thought maybe it would be of interest to some of you. Our next event, we just had our NARP at Latitude, which was actually held here in San Diego last in the month of September, but our next event, it's our um, National Housing and Policy Conference, which is in March, and it's in Washington, D.C., and it's three days of education, networking, and celebration, because, you know, as Latinos, we love to work. It's in our DNA. We are very hard workers, but we also love to 
have fun and party. So if you haven't attended any of our national conventions, highly recommended. So that's in March in Washington, D.C. And then NARP at Latitude is here in San Diego. And, you know, the, good, the thing about NARP is that it's truly where you could get to know our culture. It's really where culture and, and business opportunity intersect. So highly invite you guys to come. You could also visit our website at narp.org to get more information on any events coming up at the local level. Well, and I, I think, Amelia, you did share something you, which I thought was really good, the 2020 Hispanic House Homeownership. So tell us a little bit about the data before we go on to Kim. The data that you pulled that would be valuable for us um, to work with the consumers. Yes, and this is also on our website. You could get digital copies. So I share with you guys, you know, every March when we go to our Housing Policy Summit, they unveil the State of Hispanic Home Ownership Report that gives you the latest stats as far as where Hispanics stand with um, the home buying um, process. And then in September, we also um, unveil what we have. It's called the State of Hispanic Wealth Report. NAREP is really big. Um, we have, a, it's like a branch of our, the organization. It's called the Hispanic Wealth Project. And this is something that was launched back in 2014. And it was launched because of everything that happened during the market, market crash of 2008, where study shows that Hispanics lost two thirds of their wealth. So our co-founder was just, you know, we have to do something about this. We can't have this happen again. And part of the reason is Hispanics, um, we're still, we're trying to help bridge the wealth gap that we have between Latinos because we are not diversified when it comes to investments, you know. So a lot of those homeowners that lost two thirds of their wealth was because everything was put into their real estate, right? They didn't necessarily have stocks, mutual funds, 401k. So we have a Hispanic wealth project and it involves um, following 10 disciplines, which I gave each one of you guys a copy. We have 10 disciplines, I like to call them the 10 commandments, that anybody could live by. Um, you know, I'll share the first one that talks about having a mature understanding of wealth and prosperity because the one with the most toys usually loses. And I think that that's something that a lot of realtors that were back during the recession that were, yes, we were making a lot of money at one point, right? It was super easy, but we were also making more money and increasing our lifestyle, increasing our expenses. And when everything came down, we ended up with nothing. So that's just one of our disciplines. You could find the rest of them on our website. I wish I had time to go over all of them today, but I know we're short on time. Yes. But you could find all this information at by visiting our narip.org. Thank, Thank you. you. So Kim, what's coming on for you? Well, also, we just finished our national convention in San Francisco, October. Everybody had a blast because <laughs> people have not seen each other in person for like 22 months. So uh, February, we are going to Denver, Colorado for our Global Luxury Summit. And then in May, which is the Asian Heritage Month, then we will be going to Washington, D.C. And this time we have our policy conference because ARIA is putting heavy weight on policy advocacy. So the next national convention will be here in San Diego, 2022, October. So, but most importantly, as I mentioned earlier, we're 42 chapters across, right? So participate, go to aria.org, A-R-E-A-A.org, look for your local chapter, Call them. If they're not returning your call, let me know, okay? <laughs> so call them and find out what are your activities, how we can participate. Let's collaborate together with programs, okay? So Pamela? Yes. And if you, just to kind of piggyback on, your, on the overarching question, how do you get involved? I think I can speak for everyone up here. You don't have to identify with the diverse segment that we represent to join our membership. 12% of our membership at the Alliance identify as straight allies. 48% are women. Um, I'm a member of all of these organizations myself. I know my peers share that with me. So we definitely encourage cross, cross I don't want to say cross mixing, but <laughs> cross membership. Because the reality is folks, intersectionality is here to stay. And the yes. only way as minority associations that we're going to continue to push forward is if we work together and yes. figure out how to get on the same agenda and push for the same goals. Yes, That's and I would, sure. I would like, sorry about that, Pam. I would like to say one more thing, because I know you guys are really big on, on you know, public policy. If you guys want to join um, the National Advocacy Committee, all you have to do is text the word NAREP, that's N-A-H-R-E-P, to the number 50457, 
and enter all your information. This will allow you to get any information or campaigns that NAREP is currently advocating for. We only advocate on things that are related to advancing home ownership, access to credit, and immigration. So, so it's NAREP, N-A-H-R-E-P, text the word NAREP to 50457. You're welcome. I just wanted to add, my organization isn't really a minority. I'm a minority with the organization. We're mixed. We always have been. Uh, we have been for years. But if you want to reach out, go on the internet. It's uh, FIABCI, F-I-A-B-C-I, the International Real Estate Federation. And um, you can always find me. And I'll get back to you, Eugenia Foxworth. Well, there you have it. Do we have any questions before we conclude? Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for building Thank diversity, you. inclusion, and being part of our real estate community.